Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict Number no. Two of 2023, naming the Minister of Oil and Environment as the Minister responsible for the Supreme Council for Environment, the SCE, before the Legislative Authority, following the approval of the Cabinet Edict Number no. Twelve of 2013 on naming the Minister responsible for the SCE prior to the Legislature was abrogated. His Royal Highness also issued Edict Number no. Three of 2020. 23, designating the Minister of Health as the Minister responsible for the Supreme Council for Health before the Legislative Authority following the approval of the Cabinet. His Royal Highness also issued Edict No. 4 of 2023, designating the Minister of Municipalities and Agricultural Affairs as the Minister responsible for the Real Estate Regularity Authority, RERA, before the Legislative Authority following the approval of the Cabinet. Edict 68 of 2021 on naming the Minister responsible for RERA prior the Legislature watch abrogated. His Royal Highness also issued Edict No. 5 of 2023, designating the Minister of Cabinet Affairs as the Minister responsible for the Education and Training Quality Authority before the Legislative Authority following the approval of the Cabinet. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah Khalifa patronized the official opening ceremony of Bahrain Agricultural Foods Storage and Security Factory, BAFCO, which specializes in producing and distributing food grains locally and exporting them internationally. Present were Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Lim and a number of ministers and officials. The Deputy Premier affirmed the importance of integrating efforts that support achieving sustainable food security through the active partnership with the private sector to ensure supplying local markets with basic needs in line with the goals of the Comprehensive Development March led by His Majesty the King, the government's priorities and policies led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and the goals of Bahrain Economic Vision of 2030. He noted the interest that the private sector attaches to directing its investments and capital inward to enhance developmental fields. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah highlighted the government's commitment to implement policies that enhance food security and diversify and sustain supply chains as well as develop national capabilities in the field of food industries. He commended BAFCO for employing advanced, modern and safe technologies, wishing those in charge of the factory success. For his part, the chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI, Samir Nas, affirmed that one of the chamber's priorities is to achieve Bahrain's vision, led by His Majesty the King and with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to ensure food security security and face global challenges in this regard. BAFCO Board of Directors Chairman Khalid al Amin pointed out that the food industry requires the initiative to develop solutions to secure food at the local and regional levels.
the main reason we put up this plant is for one of the main reasons would be the food security for Bahrain because we saw an opportunity here. There isn't much industries here related to the essential food industries and Bahrain was always an import based country where we met our partners and we decided to uh, come up with something for the food security of Bahrain. And also we've been into this business for the past 30 years and uh, we have a customer base all around the world. We currently do our shipments from Sri Lanka. But for the Middle Eastern sector, we thought Bahrain would be an ideal location. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, presided over the sixth session of the council in the first session of the sixth legislative term. The council discussed the report of the Public Utilities and Environment Committee regarding Decree Law Number 32 of 2022 regarding the organization of buildings, urban planning, and the division of lands intended for reconstruction and development in the presence of the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Rumehi. The council approved the committee's recommendation to approve the decree law. The council also discussed discussed the report of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee on a proposed law amending some provisions of Decree Law No. 55 of 2002 regarding the internal regulations of the Shura Council. The Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Wael bin Nasser Limbarak, visited Bahraini farmers' markets and met the participants. The minister said that the organizing committee of the market recorded more than 120,000 visitors within two months. He was briefed about the observations and suggestions of participants and visitors. Limbarak said that the mass turnout over a period of eight weeks confirms the market's importance as a Bahraini product platform. He praised the support that the Bahraini farmers' market enjoys from the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Bahraini Farmers Market celebrates its 10th edition that include the participation of 32 farmers, 4 agricultural companies, 5 nurseries, 4 apiaries, 4 specialists in dates and 20 productive families. In addition to Children's Village that attracted more than 10,000 children with various events and activities in coordination with the Ministry of Social Development. The President of the Electricity and Water Affairs Authority, Iwa Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, visited the Communication Center and Special Operations Room affiliated with Iwa, where he was briefed on the new subscriber services and billing system launching in early February. He affirmed that the authority continues to implement its development strategy, which is based on making the subscriber the main focus of all its services with the aim of achieving their aspirations and bringing about digital transformation in all services. Services. The president of EWA indicated that the aim of the visit was to ensure the readiness of the digital systems and the caters and a smooth transition to the new system, stressing that the next stage will be a pivotal starting point in subscriber services. He added that the authority has worked to train and qualify more than 1,000 trainees to prepare for its new launch towards the complete digital transformation of electricity, water and billing systems. He noted that the new system is integrated and comprehensive comprehensive and will provide many advantages to subscribers, most notably accelerating the pace of work to ensure ease of providing services to subscribers, in addition to changing the invoice format to be a new, clearer version to ensure more accurate information to subscribers. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sayrafi, visited the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland Medical University of Bahrain in the presence of the Secretary General of the Higher Education Council and Vice Chairperson of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Sheikh Rana bin Taisa bin Daij Al Khalifa, and the CEO of Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority, Dr. Nasser Qaidi. The Minister affirmed the Ministry's keenness to promote various tourism sectors in Bahrain, including educational tourism. She discussed the university's role in promoting educational tourism in Bahrain, recalling the university's achievements in attracting more than 1,300 students from 50 nationalities studying in various health majors offered by the university at all levels. Asayrafi noted that relations between the Ministry of Tourism and educational institutions are characterized by a high level of productivity at various levels in line with the strategies and visions of the Kingdom and the Ministry. 
In implementation of the directives of the first deputy chairman and chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, chairman of the General Sports Authority, GSA, and president of the Bahraini Olympic Committee, His Honor Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, GSA, in cooperation with the initiatives of His Honor Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held, under, uh, held a press conference to reveal the details of Bahraini Sports Summit and Bahrain Sports Day 2023 activities. GSA CEO Dr. Abdurrahman Sadiq Askar stressed, that the establishment of the Bahraini Sports Summit came upon the directives of His Highness Sheikh Khalid and based on the recommendations of the SCYS, which aims to study Bahraini sports in four aspects and review the experiences of the advanced country in it to come up with recommendations that develop the sports work system in the country. During the press conference, the main aspects of the summit were revealed, which is scheduled to take place from the 4th to the 9th of February. The activities of Bahrain Sports Day were also discussed. Discussed. 147,000 students returned to public schools and about 14,000 teachers attended in preparation for the start of the second semester. The ministry prepared its educational facilities according to the mechanism of the first semester. Students will receive approximately 1,100,000 copies of textbooks for the courses of the second semester in all academic levels during the current week to ensure the regularity of the educational process as part of the approved distribution plan in schools. The real estate sector in Bahrain was able to achieve recovery and growth during the year 2022, overcoming the stagnation it witnessed during the global pandemic. The volume of real estate trading until the end of the last quarter of 2022 reached 1,086 billion Bahraini dinars, with an increase of 3.9%. The recovery of the real estate sector during the past month was reflected in the increase in the demand for buying residential properties in various parts of Bahrain especially in light of the issuance of the decision to cancel infrastructure fees which contributed to revitalizing real estate movement in the market and attracting investors. The growing tourism movement in the kingdom over the past year contributed to supporting the local economy which positively affected the revenues of the hospitality and hotel sector as well as the real estate sector. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi underlined the special historical ties between Egypt and Armenia, especially at the popular level in light of Egypt's hosting of a large Armenian community who have long bolstered bilateral ties at the political, economic, cultural and artistic levels. The Egyptian president made his remarks while addressing a joint press conference with the Armenian president, Fahagan Kachturian al-Sisi voiced a happiness for being the first Egyptian president to visit the city since the establishment of diplomatic ties between the two countries about 30 years ago. The Armenian president hailed the Sisi's historic visit. Both leaders witnessed the signing of a number of cooperation agreements in the fields of culture and youth. <laughs> Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed the kingdom's strong condemnation and denunciation of the burning of copies of the Holy Quran by extremists in the Danish capital Copenhagen in a new provocative step to the feelings of millions of Muslims around the world. The ministry reiterated the kingdom's position, which strongly rejects all these blatant acts and unfortunately have been repeated in several European capitals recently under the pretext of freedom of expression without a clear reaction towards stopping these practices. The ministry stressed that the kingdom demands all European governments in which these extremist violations occurred to urgently address all these practices that contribute to fueling hatred and conflict between followers of religions. And Tunisians started voting in the second round of legislative elections as a total of 4,222 voting centers and 10,012 polling stations opened to voters at 8 a.m. local time amid tight security measures. The total number of candidates running for this round reached 262, including 34 women. The announcement of the preliminary results of the second round of the elections will be no later than February 1st, and the final results after the end of the appeals will be announced announced before March the 4th. The first round of Tunisia's legislative elections, which took place on December the 17th, saw a low turnout rate of 11.2%, with only 23 candidates confirmed seats in the new parliaments.